Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Happy Holidays from my family to yours. Each and every year, this time of year, I get asked more than any other about the Nintendo Switch and what the heck to get the kids because we don't know what this Switch is. It's been five years, people. Come on, get with it. I kid, I understand, and I appreciate people coming to me for help, and that's what I'm gonna do for you here today. Now, I have a full playlist of other Christmas and holiday buying guides I'll have listed for you right up there, but this year we're gonna get more specific. In the past, I've gotten more generic. Get extra controllers, get this, that, and the other thing. This year, I'm gonna actually make specific product recommendations, and I will have all the links down below in a pinned comment. Now, to get started, a lot of people wonder, which Switch do I need to get my kids? Because there are three different variants. The original Switch, the Switch OLED, and the Switch Lite. So first and foremost, let's talk about the Switch Lite. If you are looking for something to primarily play in handheld mode, that's what this will do for you. There is nothing, not a thing at all you can do to connect this to a TV to be able to play. This will only work in handheld mode. If I can't make that point any more blunt, you can't hook it up to a TV. <laughs> this is the only screen you can play on. But if you're looking for portable on the go use, you don't want to connect to a TV, this is a good way to get invested in the Switch ecosystem and save yourself $100 versus the other systems that are out there. Now, during the holidays, I'm gonna mention one specific combo in a little bit that might actually be a better value than this. For me, I personally don't play in handheld mode a lot. My wife, this is her Switch Lite. All she does is play in handheld mode. She only plays one game though too, so there is that. Uh, great battery life, very good display. One benefit of the Switch Lite versus the other Switches, which we'll talk about in a second, is on the left-hand side here. Instead of having the A, B, X, Y buttons like it does on this one here, this actually has a traditional D-pad. So if you're playing like old school Super Mario Brothers games or, or other platformer type games, 2D type games, things that we would have played on the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, the Sega Genesis, this is actually a better way to play. I personally think this is a very comfortable system to hold and play, more comfortable in handheld than the Switch. It's just my opinion. Now, this is actually an optional grip on the back here. This is the Satisfy grip. My wife loves this. I'm not as big of a fan of this as she is. I actually prefer the one from Skull & Co. Very similar in design, a little bit better ergonomics, at least for me. Now there is also the Switch OLED, which is what's hooked up to the TV behind me, and the original Switch, which is what I have on this little device here that we're gonna talk about in a moment. So the original Switch and the Switch OLED, few main differences between the two of them. On the Switch OLED, you get a larger display, you get a dock that has an ethernet port, so if you wanna hardwire connect to the internet, you can do that. The um, kickstand on the Switch OLED is better, and you get better audio while playing in handheld mode out of the Switch OLED. When connected to a TV, the original Switch and the Switch OLED are identical. Now, for 2022 Black Friday, Walmart and a few other stores have a promotion going on with the original Switch where you get a copy of Super Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and it's a fantastic game. If you're going to be playing, or the kids are gonna be mostly playing connected to a TV, that's not a bad deal. If you are going to want that hybrid type console with both handheld and TV mode, I would recommend going with the Switch OLED. The screen is more vibrant, the audio is a heck of a lot better than what this one has. That kickstand is a lot better too, so overall, if you're looking to have more of a uh, handheld experience, Along with TV mode, go with the Switch OLED. If it's gonna be primarily hooked up to your TV, go with the original Nintendo Switch and save yourself some pennies. Now let's talk about this doodad that I have in my hands here. So in handheld mode, I'm not the biggest fan of the Switch, the original one. The Switch Lite is pretty good. The original Switch and the Switch OLED, for me, not as comfortable. I don't like the Joy-Cons that they have on the side. They're a little bit too small. It feels wide to me. It doesn't feel as balanced. Now this is called the Fixture Gaming S1. There's also the Fixture Gaming S2. And this is an original Switch that we have here. What this little clip does is it allows you to use a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, which we're gonna talk about in a moment, in handheld mode with your Switch. And you can basically hold your Switch like this and be able to go ahead and play. So uh, there are, like I mentioned, two different versions. The Fixture Gaming S1 
is for the original Switch. The S2 is for the Switch OLED. Now, one other benefit about both of these clips, and I actually have another one sitting right here, is you can pop the controller out, have your Switch still in this, and then it provides a better tabletop mode experience, and it's pretty infinitely adjustable up and down, forward and back. So. Some people find it heavy and it fatigues their hands. I don't, I think it's terrific. This is the way when I play in handheld mode, either in my uh, Switch OLED or my original Switch, this is what I play with along with my Switch Pro Controller. And let's talk about the Pro Controller for a moment. So out of the box, the Switch comes with a set of Joy-Cons and what is called the Joy-Con grip. That's this guy here. So what this allows you to do is use the Joy-Cons off of the switch and basically have a real controller as it were. I'm not a fan of this. I think the grips are too small. I think the buttons are too small. It doesn't address the lack of a D-pad here for those platforms like we talked about. Overall, not the way I like to play. So the Nintendo Pro Controller is my controller of choice for playing either my original Switch or my Switch OLED. Let's pop this guy out here. And as you can see, you know, it's somewhat similar to like an xbox controller better overall ergonomics better grips on it has a true directional pad on it now this one i've installed a custom case on but you can get these in a bunch of different colors um, these also support uh, amiibo which are little figurines you can get you can scan them on here and it adds and unlocks different abilities and character stuff in different games so like on uh, super mario kart for example you can scan an amiibo and it'll actually bring you know that uh, that information into your game. You can back up and transfer your stuff using amiibos too. Now these are not cheap. They normally go for anywhere from fifty to seventy dollars, depending on if they are on sale or not. If you're looking to save a few dollars, I cannot recommend the KMD Pro controllers highly enough. They're available both in black and red, and I recently featured these in one of our YouTube shorts. What I like about them, they're again, very comfortable. They're decently responsive. They have good sticks on them. The button uh, presses are good and everything on them. USB-C for charging. So overall, a lot of things to go for it. And right now, the last time I looked, they're only $20 on Amazon. You can get three of these for the cost of one of those. So especially if you've got kids who beat up their stuff, this is a great way to play. Now, one thing on these is they do not support Amiibo, but you can always scan your Amiibo on the Joy-Con and then use these to play. So that is you know, a workaround for that. Good battery life, very comfortable. These are, when I'm not using my Nintendo Pro Controller, this is what I grab nine times out of 10. They are just really, really good. And I don't feel bad too. Like I don't have a ton of people that come over and play games with us, but if and when I do, I hand them one of these and know that they can't complain about me beating them because of the controllers. So we talked about systems, we talked about grips, we talked about controllers. Now what if you wanted to go ahead and connect your Switch or Switch OLED that you're going to get to another TV? Well, you need another dock. The stock Nintendo dock, well, they're not cheap. And quite honestly, it's just not worth it for a hunk of plastic. But I recently reviewed this here and I absolutely love this dock. This is the, the Esoy dock and it's available on Amazon under $40 and this provides all of the exact same benefits as the Switch OLED dock. And by that I mean you've got three USB ports, you have an Ethernet port on the back, and it works with both the Switch and the Switch OLED. Um, so, and it's nice, it's compact, you can use this to connect to another TV in a bedroom, in a kids room, in a game room, in a man cave. You can take this with you as small as it is and as portable as it is. It's really nice and it just, it performs really well. If you want to see more about this, I'll have it, uh, our review link for you right up there. The one thing this does not use or include, it does use, but does not include a power supply. Now, five plus years ago, there were issues with third party Nintendo Switch docks damaging the consoles. It, it bricked them is what it was called. The solution, quite honestly, and the problem was manufacturers including out-of-spec power supplies with their docks. This comes straight from an electrical engineer who helped diagnose what the issue with the third-party docks was. To avoid any issues, buy this and also buy the Nintendo OEM power supply. You know, that way you're not going to go wrong, you're not going to damage your system, it is a a good way for you to go to save some money and be able to hook your switch up 
to another television. Now, when you have your Switch hooked up to another TV, what about games? Well, my taste in games is a little bit different, but I'm gonna recommend three games here that just about anybody will be able to enjoy. First up is Super Mario Odyssey. This is probably my favorite game on the Nintendo Switch. You take Mario through a number of different adventures. The graphics are beautiful. The music is stunning. I just, I love this game so much. It has so much replayability to it as well. You can go back after you've beaten the main game and try to get more, more moons and complete the Odyssey. It just, it is a classic Mario game. So many people talk about a spiritual successor to Mario 64 because that was such a classic. This is not only a successor, it's an improvement in every way on Super Mario 64. This is probably the best Super Mario game I have played since Super Mario World. It's been a long time. This is absolutely brilliant. Next up, we all remember the Nintendo Wii, right? People breaking their TVs, grandma and grandpa buying one just so that they could play bowling. Well, they have brought out Nintendo Switch Sports, which is the successor to Wii Sports. Very similar to that, you can go ahead and play tennis and bowling. There's a sword fighting game. And the beautiful thing about this is it's less expensive than a typical first run Nintendo game. Normally you're gonna pay about 60 bucks for a Switch game. This about 40 to 45, depending on where you get it at. Uh, and the thing with everything I'm showing you here game-wise, you can get a physical cartridge, or you can download it from the Nintendo eShop. And we're gonna talk about the eShop here in just a moment. And finally, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I've talked about this quite a bit already. This is one of my favorite games for the Nintendo Switch. And like I mentioned, there are some bundles out there for Black Friday that include a digital copy of this game. It's brilliant, it's so much fun. Now, this is essentially the exact same game as the one that was on the previous generation system, the Wii U. But what they've done with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is they have added in all of the downloadable content from the Wii U version, and there's some additional things you can unlock. Speaking of which, so those are my three cartridge games that I recommend. We need to talk about the Nintendo Switch Online service, which is, there's a couple different tiers and it can get confusing real quick. I'm gonna to try to explain it all to you. So you don't need to be online with the Nintendo Switch. I will tell you that right now. However, if you do subscribe to the Nintendo Switch online service, you do get some bonus features to it. So first and foremost, on the basic tier, which you can get for one system, is you can get access to uh, be able to play online against other people and like Splatoon and other games. But you also get access to a catalog of games from the original Nintendo Entertainment System and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Now they also have what they call the Expansion Pack. And that gets you access to a catalog of games from the Nintendo 64 and the Sega Genesis, which is very, very cool. The fact that you can get Sega games on here and N64 games. Now, in addition to all of those systems that you can have access to, you also have access to exclusive content if you do go ahead and sign up for the expansion pack. We're gonna bring it up on screen right here. So here you can see we've got the Nintendo 64 content. Uh, you also have access to additional tracks for Super Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. They call it the expansion pack. Normally I wanna say it's $25 if you buy that separately. If you're a subscriber to the Nintendo Online expansion pack, it's free. Um, now the expansion pack is more expensive. I think for an individual, it's $50. Um, I do the family pack just because my daughter and her boyfriend, they both have switches. My wife has a switch, I have a switch, and then we have a family friend that we share our membership with as well. So you can have, I think, up to five different devices uh, on the account. You also get access to um, the Animal Crossing Happy Home Paradise, the Octo Expansion Pack for Splatoon 2, and like I mentioned, the Sega Genesis games. And this is all through the Nintendo Online uh, expansion pack. Now, one other thing I want to show you too is you can actually download games through the Nintendo Switch eShop. But there is a way you can save money buying games through the eShop. So, first and foremost, go physical whenever you can. Eh. There's no price discount normally for going digital versus physical, and if and when the eShop shuts down, you lose access to your games if you ever have to re-download. If you already have them, you still have them, but if the eShop shuts down and you need to re-download it, you're up the creek. Now, 
you can get gift cards for the Nintendo Switch Online service anywhere from $5 up to $100 and then different uh, uh, amounts across the world. In the US, if you have a Sam's Club membership or if you have a Target red card, either a debit card or a credit card, you can save and basically get free money to buy stuff in the Nintendo eShop. So with the Target red card, you save 5% every day on everything that you buy in the store, including gift cards. If you buy Burger King or McDonald's or Starbucks, buy your gift cards from Target and save 5%. You can thank me later. Sam's Club often has a three pack of cards available for five to 10% lower than if you bought the cards separately. So that is a way that you can go ahead and gift those gift cards away and save yourself a little bit of money too. So one thing I did forget to mention was the fact that all three versions of the Switch, the Switch, the Switch OLED, Switch Lite, come with like pitiful amounts of onboard storage. In fact, there are some games that you can't play without getting an external micro SD card. Uh, the Switch and the Switch Lite both have 32 gigs of onboard storage. The Switch OLED has 64, but that's not a problem because you can go ahead and get an external micro SD card like the one that we have here. Now, I like using SanDisk's ones personally, and uh, this one has a 256 gig card. Uh, my Switch OLED actually has a 400 gig card, and I think my original Switch has 128, but I would not recommend going with anything less than 256. The Nintendo Switch is an absolutely brilliant system. It is still one that I play probably more than anything else. My PS5 is a close second but I still love this system five years after launch. And hopefully I've given you some good recommendations on things to go ahead and add to the wish list, add to the shopping cart to make the Switch gift giving experience that much better for the person receiving your gifts. Now, like I mentioned at the top of this, I will have a link to the controllers, to the Fixture Gaming S1, to the dock, to the games, to the system, all down below in a pinned comment to make it a whole lot easier for you to go ahead and fine. I've done the research for you, so you don't have to. Now, uh, if you do want to go ahead, if you like what you see here, if you want to see more, if you want to be kept up to date, because we do a ton of Switch content too, hopefully I have earned your subscription. Hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. That way every time that we do upload new content, you are kept informed and up to date. Now, if you are looking for any other videos on the Switch, Switch Lite, Switch OLED, parts, pieces, accessories, games, those videos are coming up for you right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to help support Rock Solid Productions and be a part of our community, there's a number of different ways you can do so. First and foremost, join us over on our Patreon page or become a channel member here on YouTube. By joining through either one of those methods, you get early access to just about all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. We also give you shout outs at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also pick up some awesome Rock Solid Productions swag. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more available through our Teespring store on screen right now too. You can also pick up some of our awesome 3D printed cartridge stands, Amiibo holders, Nintendo DS holders, and more by visiting our 3D printer store on screen right now as well. Links for everything will be down below in a pinned comment. If you wanna stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Rock Solid Productions, make sure that you're following us on the different social media networks. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions, Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions GK, and Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. If you're looking to pick this and other retro and modern gaming accessories up, make sure that you head on over to castlemaniagames.com. He has a feature over there called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases, and Castle Cash is just like cash. He also offers convenient payment plans for more expensive items over $50. Finally, make sure that you use promo code ROCKSOLID10 when you're shopping at CastlemaniaGames.com as it can save you up to 10% on most items on the website. Again, thank you for watching this episode and I cannot wait to see you again soon.